Alright guys, welcome back to the advanced scripting series. Today we're going to be going over data store service. We're going to be learning how to save data uh, using get and set async. And we're also going to kind of talk about pcall. So I hope you guys are really excited for this. I know I am. Let's just go ahead and dive right in. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and enter the script into server script service. And we can call this data saving or data stores, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so uh, first of all, what are data stores? Data stores are a way for us to save data in our game. That way, when a player leaves and rejoins, we can get that data again, uh, and people don't have to start over with their progress. So let's learn how to save data. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get the service, and we've been doing this with tween service and user input service, um, but it's going to be the same sort of thing. So we, ha we have to make a variable to hold the service. So data store service... Uh, we can call it, uh, yeah, local data store service, that's our new variable, equals to game colon get service data store service. So again, this is another service that Roblox provides called data store service, uh, and it is a way for us to be able to save data um, using, well, Roblox's built-in data saving. So next we actually have to get a data store, and each data store is kind of like a separate box, if you want to think about it like that. So every, every data store holds different information. So let's say maybe you have a certain data store that holds all your shop data, and maybe you have a different data store that holds all your leader stats data. It's basically just different containers that we can use um, to store different pieces of data. So uh, let's go ahead and create a data store. The way we do that is by setting again another variable, local data uh, data store, and then we can say equals to data store service colon get data store, and then you have parentheses and quotation marks, and inside those quotes you're going to go ahead and name your data store. So uh, let's just call this leader stats because we're going to learn how to save some leader stats. So now we've created a data store, remember like a box, and we've called that box leader stats. Okay. So now whenever we try and get data from the data store called leader stats, it's going to give us the data that we saved to the box called leader stats. So uh, let's go ahead and create a basic leader stats script. Uh, since you're in the uh, the advanced series, I'm going to assume that you already know how to do this. So we're going to go over this quickly. Game.players.playeradded colon connect function plr. Uh, plr is the player that just joined. Local folder equals instance dot new folder comma plr. So we're uh, we're adding a new folder into the player. I don't know if you knew you could do this, but you can actually add a comma uh, after what you're creating to tell the script where to parent it. So this is um, by adding plr after a comma right here in the instance dot new. It's the same thing as just saying folder dot parent equals to uh, plr. Just just so you know. And then we can say folder dot name equals to leader stats. Remember, it has to be a lowercase l. Now, let's go ahead and create uh, a data value. Let's create coins. So, local coins equals instance.new int value, comma, folder. So, we've just created an int value inside of the folder. Uh, and we can say coins.name equals to coins. Okay. And then we can say while true do task.wait1. So, every one second, we'll say coins.value plus equals one. So every single, uh, we're doing this all the time, so every second, we're going to wait a second, and then we're going to add one to the coin's value. So if we go ahead and play this script, you can see that in the top right corner, we'll have a leader stats, um, I guess, uh, board, where we have coins that goes up every single second. Perfect. But now we want to make it so that when I click stop and I leave the game, it actually saves that data. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and set the data whenever a player leaves. So we can say uh, game.players.player removing. This is another event, so this will fire whenever a player leaves the game. So we can say cone connect function PLR, and yes, PLR is the player that left the game. Now let's go ahead and get the coins. So local coins equals to PLR.leaderStats.coins, okay? So uh, we're just setting this variable to be whatever the player's leader stats coins is whenever the player tries to leave the game. So re right before they leave the game, we quickly grab the coin, uh, the, uh, the leader stats and the coins inside of the leader stats. And then all we have to say is data store colon set async plr.userid comma coins.value. So I know this is a little, bit, uh, a little bit tricky. It just takes some practice. But uh, let's go ahead and run over what this means. First of all, data store. Remember, that's our little folder called leader stats. If you look up to the top where we defined a data store, we set it equal to data store colon get service leader stats, right? So that is our box or our data store, right? Our, our, uh, our piece of information, our, our box that contains leader stats. 
So we set used set async right here. And that just means we're going to set some data to this data store right here. See this data store called data store. We're using set async to set data to that data store. And the next thing is parentheses. So we're going to tell it inside those parentheses what we actually want to save. But you have to pass two things. That's why we have a comma. The first thing is the key. And that to do that, I use plr.useready. The key is basically just, OK, what, what data are we saving? So that when we look into the leader stats box, what are we looking for? So let's say, uh, just for an example, Bob just left the game and he had 25 coins. So now what we're doing is we're saying, OK, let's set 25 coins. Let's put that in the data store and let's give it a name of Bob, right? We're going to we're going to tell the data store, hey, this is Bob's data. That's the first thing we pass through the key. Uh, and every player has a user ID. So when you type plr.user ID, every single player on Roblox has one of these. So it's a good way to save data. And they're all different. Uh, unlike display names or things like that, the P a player's user ID is always different. It's a, it's a completely unique ID. So the way we can use this is by saying, hey, data store, we're going to save this data with a key or with, uh, like, so think of this as, um, think of it as, like, the key to a, a, a lock or something like that. Or maybe, like, a passcode to a vault. That, that's probably a better way to think of it. So we're saying, OK, the passcode to unlock this, uh, this data is the player's user ID. So then up here in the top, we can say coins.value equals to data store colon get async this time. This time we want to get the data. And now we have to tell it what's the key, what's, what's the password that we want to use. And that is the PLR user ID. So we're going to look in the data store and we're going to see if we can find any data that's associated with the player's user ID. And if so, we're going to set the coins there. Uh, and that is how you do it. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about a couple more things now. But um, if that doesn't make sense, then just keep practicing. Basically, just remember set async. That's how you set data. And then you can give it a key or a password or what, what are we setting the data uh, equal to. And uh, then once we want to get the get the data, we just have to come up with get async and we're going to use the player's user ID or the, the passcode is going to be required. So it's going to get the data that is associated with the player's user ID. Okay. So let's go ahead and test this out. The way we have to do that is by actually first you got to save your game. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, I've just, just published my game. Uh, if you've already had your game published, you're fine. Uh, but then you go up to Game Settings in the top, and you click Security, and you click Enable Studio Access to API Services. So what this does is it's saying, okay, we're going to let Roblox Studio save data now, and not just regular Roblox. Okay, so if you hit Play, uh, we should have our coins ticking up every second. One, two, three, four, and we're going to stop when it says, like, seven. Okay, we're going to leave the game. And if we play, I'm expecting one of two results. Either A, it's actually going to save our data, or B, it's not. And I'll tell you why in a second, because uh, that's what we're going to go over. But let's see. Yep, okay, we loaded back in with 7. As you can see, our data was saved. Now, it's possible that your data wasn't saved. And uh, we're going to go over what to do in that case. So if your data wasn't saved, that's probably just because the server shut down before it was able to actually save the data. And a way we can get get around this is by using bind to close. So we can say game colon bind to close function like this. Okay. So um, this this right here says binds a function to be called before the game shuts down. So write this like this, and this is basically saying okay before our server shuts down, we're gonna do everything inside of here. So what we can do is we can save the data of any players left in the game before the game or the server shuts down. So we can say for i comma plr in pairs game dot players colon get players do. So we're gonna loop through all the players, right? And i is the index. Plr is like we used to use v in the beginner scripting series, uh, but this just means okay for every player inside of the current players do. We're looping through all the players, and then we can just copy and paste this code right here into the loop. So we're looping through all the players that are left in the game. We're going to get that player's coins and we're going to save that player's coins. Okay. So that is how you can um, add some, uh, just a little extra layer of backup in case the server shuts down before you get to save the coins. Okay. So that is that. Uh, let me look 
through. I think that's just about everything we need, and then we're going to talk about P call. So let's go ahead and play the game again, and we should see that we have around eight or so coins. I don't remember where it saved last time. Okay, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, perfect. So we can hit stop, and it will take a little bit longer than usual because, uh, well, we if we're saving data this time, so it takes a little bit longer than usual to stop. But now let's wrap this in a P call. Um, and what a P call does is it basically says, okay, we're going to keep doing our script even if our script has an error in it. So what, uh, the way we do this is by saying local success, comma, error message. Whoops, I misspelled error. Error message equals to P call function. Okay. And then you can go ahead and add an end like this uh, after this coins.value right here. And then you can add a little tab to make sure that the spacing is correct. Okay, so uh, first of all, you may be kind of confused as to what this is all about. Uh, this is just a, a P call, and I have a whole video talking about P call, uh, so I'm not going to go fully uh, in depth with it. I'll leave it linked in the description. But basically it's saying, hey, we are going to do this little function, this uh, getting our data, and even if uh, we have a, a problem with it for some reason. Maybe uh, there's no data saved. Maybe there is uh, a problem with Roblox um, or whatever. Uh, then we're going to keep doing whatever is below it. So it won't break our script. Uh, anything inside of a P call, even if there's an error, it will um, it'll keep running what's after it. So uh, we can say if success, then print data successfully loaded. Okay. And... Uh, if error message, then warn error message. Okay, so now we're just saying uh, whenever we do a P call, it gives us two variables. One is success, was it su successfully completed or not? And the second one is error message. So if we had an error within this P call function, error message is going to store that error. So we can say if success, so if we successfully went through this P call, then we can print data was successfully loaded. But if we have an error message, then we're going to go ahead and warn that error message in the output. So you can go ahead and hit play, and you should see in your output uh, that the data was successfully loaded. Yep, there we go. All right, perfect. Uh, that is just about it. But finally, let's go ahead and see how can we save more than just one piece of data. So if you want to save maybe like coins and gems, you're going to want to save a table and not just a value. So uh, what, basically what we're going to end up doing is we're going to say, okay, local uh, t, and you don't have to copy this, this is just an example, is 200 comma 10. So we can save a table like this, and that'll say, hey, our coins are 10, or our, our, our coins are 200, and our gems are 10, okay? So if we save a table, we can actually save multiple values. So in order to do this, let's go ahead and come down here to um, right above our p call, and we'll say uh, local coins val equals to zero, local gems val equals to zero. Next, we can say local gems equals to instance dot new int value comma folder. So basically, we're gonna redo what we did up here uh, with the coins. We're just doing that again, but creating one for gems. Okay. So gems is going to be equal to a new uh, int value as well. So now I have two, two values in our leader stats. We have coins and we have gems. And now we have these two variables called our coins val and our gems val. So instead of setting the coins value directly, what I want to do is I want to set the variable coins val to be whatever our data is. So we can say coins val equals to, and then what we're going to need to do for this is create another variable. We can say local data equals to data store colon get async and we're going to talk through this again don't worry about it if you're not understanding just follow along for now plr dot user id so coins val equals to data one and then gems val equals to data two all right and then down here after the error message we can just say coins dot value equals to coins val and gems dot value equals to gems val so, uh, what this is saying is we're making a new variable, we're calling it data, and we're setting that equal to whatever our data is. So we're, we're looking for the data inside of our data store, and now we have a variable with that data. Now what we're saying is the first item in the table, remember how I made this earlier with 210, 
uh, the first very first item in our table is going to be our coins, and the second uh, value in our table is going to be the gems. So uh, we can go ahead and get the data of the first value in our table. That's how you do that with a table, by the way. I don't know if I explained that before, but local tab uh, local my table equals to one two. If you say my table and then square brackets in a one, that gets the first value in your table, which would be this right here, the string one. And if you say two in the square brackets, it'll get the second value of the table. So we're basically just saying, hey, we're gonna get the first value of the table of uh, the table and set that equal to our variable called coins val. And now we're gonna get the second variable of the table and we're gonna set it equal to our gems val. And once we're all done with this, we're going to go ahead and set the coins val and the gems value. Okay, the next thing to do is actually save our data correctly now, because you'll notice right now we're just saving our coins value. So scroll down to your game.players.player removing block of code, and we're going to remove this. Uh, no, we're not going to remove this, but we're going to modify this a little bit. So right under your local coins, you can actually go ahead and copy and paste this little line of code, because we also need a, uh, a value for gems. So gems equals plr.leaderstats.gems. Okay, perfect. So now we have the coins and the gems. And now what we can do is instead of saying coins.value right here, we can just create a table. Okay, so we're going to save, we're going to say set async plr.userid. So we're going to set the data of the player's user ID to be a new table that has coins.value, comma, gems.value. So now we have set a table, and the first value of that table is our coins, the second value of that table is our gems, and we have just saved that data to the player's user ID. So the next thing to do, just copy and paste this code right here down into our bind to close function. So you can get rid of all this down here in your bind to close and you can paste the new code there. And that should be just about it. If you play the first time, you will notice well, we should get an error. And that's because, well, we, yeah, attempt to index number with number. Uh, and that's because we already had data stored from our last time. Remember last time we played this game, it stored however many coins we had. It did not store a table. So we got an error there, but now if we go ahead and stop it and we hit play, we should see that both of our, our uh, values were saved. And I can also go ahead and change the gems. There you go, our coins were loaded in. Now I'm going to go into the server and I'm going to change our gems to be 12. And then as you can see, I have 21 coins and 12 gems. I'm going to hit stop and we're going to play again. And our data should load for us if we hit play. And let's see, here we go. And there we go, 12 gems, 23 coins. That's how you can save data in Roblox Studio. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, you can go ahead and uh, head to my Discord server. That's probably a better way to get help uh, and post your question there. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, also, a huge shout out to Samuel Ramsey and Snorlax for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you guys have a, uh, yeah, any questions, make sure to join the Discord server. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in a future video. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.